Here's the portrait that we corrected in RAW and it's opened up in Photoshop. What I need now to do is to isolate the model from the background. I'm going to go and grab the Quick Selection tool. The Quick Selection tool has these options about the size and the hardness and the spacing. I like the size to be somewhere between 30 and 40 for this. The hardness is generally pretty low. Spacing I'm fine with 25%. I come over, I click on the background, and I just drag. And I'm doing it relatively quickly. And I just want to hit all of these areas. You don't have to hold the mouse down. It'll just go in and grab those areas. It looks like it was a little aggressive here and grabbed some of her hair that I need to get back. So I will go ahead and hold down the uh, option key and then I paint back the areas that I want. And it looks like overdid it there just a little bit and I'm just touching this up here. I want to get this back right here. You can see just in general there's a lot of hair and everything beyond my marching ants. I'm not concerned about that right now. We're going to reclaim that later. I only want the model selected. So I'm going to go and I'm going to inverse my selection and you can see now that she is encapsulated in this marching ants. I need to refine this edge however. So I click on the refine edge tool and before when we did the studio product we went here right to the adjust edge and the smooth and the feather. We're not going to be working with that right now. We're going to go here to the smart radius and we're going to click on the smart radius. And let me I'll bump this up so you can see this take place. You can see there's no hairs beyond this rough grab. But as I had the smart radius and then I move the radius up to the right, you're going to see that it finds all of that hair that's been, uh, was neglected by that first tool. There's another way to even add on to this is to click this brush tool and when I do so I get this uh, circle or this brush size and as I paint around the edges it will find those hairs for me and then I just let it go. So this is a really nice uh, extraction tool. You can see that I have all that hair now that's going to be recorded. I can just keep on going out here. I think there's a bunch there. So, so now all that hair has been found so I'm pretty happy with that selection. It was very quick. I now just need to output the selection and I'm going to ask it to go to a new layer. So I click on new layer and I click OK. You can see now that I have the background turned off and I have the background copy which has the transparent background. Make this so that we can see it a little bit better. So the next thing that I have to do really is just to go ahead and add my background. So I picked out a, uh, this coleus uh, plant uh, and I'm going to drop that as in my background and just control the, the uh, sharpness and blur of it through a Gaussian blur. I also made this size here a little bit bigger than my, uh, my other image. This is um, 11, 15 by 180. Let me verify what this other size is here, which I didn't do. Okay, I resample. I'm making this 180. Click that. I want the height to be 9 inches. Click OK. So the background is bigger. Apple A, Apple C copies it. Then I click on the model. Apple V pastes it. So I'm going to change the layer order so that she's above that. Now, as I said, I made the a background layer larger in size so I can grab this move tool now and I can move this around to where I can find where that background might be more appropriate. Well I don't want her I don't want it looking like she's getting eaten by a Venus flytrap here. So I'm going to go to the filter, I'm going to go to the blur, to the Gaussian blur, and I'm going to just scroll this up and down to see what how real I want that background to appear. You can see that I can make it very abstract and just, you know, these tones. By changing that, I'm going to 
I am going to give some consideration to the overall lighting of the image. I think something like right in there would be pretty nice. I'm going to click OK. And I'm pretty happy with the way this works. I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. I'm then going to go put it on a canvas size. And the canvas size will be 8 inches wide. It will be 10 inches high. I'm going to click OK. And there's my portrait.